So DEXA may not be the best tool for osteoporosis imaging. There's a tool called RAMS, an ultrasound called RAMS from the company Echolite that is growing in popularity. There's a lot of questions around this. Is it more accurate? How can we tell? Well, there's a new study that shed some light on this topic. You're gonna to wanna to see this. So recently I met with Dr. Nick Birch. Now, Nick is an orthopedic surgeon in England, and we had a discussion because he uses REMS, has for years. He's been in the, the practice of bone health for a long time, and he compares it to DEXA basically all day long, every day. He's looked at thousands and thousands of scans, and he recently published this paper that I'm gonna talk about. So he was a very scientific-minded guy. He's a spine surgeon by training, keenly interested in, in REMS data compared to DEXA, and it was a very enlightening conversation, not only around what I'm gonna to present to you now, but also the future of REMS internationally, which he plans to be a big part of. So before I get into this study, it's a little bit technical. So let me just define a couple of terms for you. So number one is accuracy versus precision. So accuracy means, and if we think about this from like a, a dart perspective, like a dart and a dartboard. So accuracy is how close can you throw the dart to hit the bullseye? So if you hit the bullseye, you are accurate. But if you throw five darts and they're all over the target and only one's in the bullseye, you are not particularly precise. Precision is how frequently can you hit the same spot on the dartboard. So let's say you were throwing darts at the dartboard and you got five darts in, remember the triple 20 spot, the really small 20 spot. So if you got five darts there, that's very, very precise. But if you were aiming for the bullseye, not particularly accurate. So accuracy and precision are very different. That's gonna come into play here when we talk about DEXA versus REMS. The other thing we need to talk about here is this definition of the word discordance. So we don't hear this talked about a lot when it comes to DEXA and REMS, but it's important for this study because we're looking specifically at the discordance between a DEXA and a REMS for a particular person. Now we're not comparing the two for each person, but we're looking at DEXA scans overall versus REM scans overall, and we're identifying discordance. So what does discordance mean? Discordance means there is a difference between the hip and the spine of greater than one standard deviation for minor discordance or two standard deviations for major discordance. So what the heck did I just say? Basically, if someone has not osteoporosis, or not even osteopenia, but then osteoporosis in another region of their body. So let's say normal bone density in their spine and osteoporosis in their hip or vice versa, that's gonna be a major discordance. It's two standard deviations away. If someone has osteopenia in one area and osteoporosis in another area, that's one standard deviation away and that's minor discordance. Now, obviously there is there are going to be people that are right on the, the border. So let's say their spine is negative two six and their hip is negative two four. Technically, that is minor discordance. However, they adjust for that in this paper. So the study is called Prevalence of Major and Minor Discordance Between Hip and Spine T-Scores Using REMS. So this is a 2023 study. It involved 1,855 patients who underwent a REMS examination between the years of 2018 and 2022. And they evaluated the prevalence of major and minor discordance between hip and spine T-scores and then compared it to historical data around DEXA. And Nick sent me all the data that he pulled for this and it's a lot of data. He looked at a lot of studies. So when you look at major discordance, again, so two standard deviations apart from spine and hip, there were none in all over 1800 REMS cases. Now, if you look at that in DEX, there's some studies that say up to 17% of DEXAs will have discordance that big, which is a much bigger number. Now, when it comes to minor discordance or less than one standard deviation, the REMS a rate of around 15%, a little over 15%. But if you look in the DEXA literature, it's actually between 38 and 51%. So half of DEXA scans were over a standard deviation apart according to the results. Now, when you go back and look at the REMS data, we don't have this for the, the DEXA because it's not reported, but when you go back and look at how close they were, the 74% uh, of the REMS discordance cases had less than a 0 0.5 standard deviation. So they actually were in a full standard deviation apart. They were, you know, they could have been, you know, 2.6 and 2.4 for osteoporosis and osteopenia respectively. So they were relatively close. And then you go back and look and say, well, which one is usually worse? Is it the spine or the hip? And in 75.5% of cases, the spine T score was greater or lower than that of the hip consistent with the DEXA in most studies. So it's more common to see the spine worse than the hip when you look at discordance on imaging. 
So the conclusion of the author is that the REMS shows potential for more accurate bone health assessments and reduced missed classification. So I want to talk about that misclassification here for a second because misclassification is really important. I see people that have been diagnosed with osteoporosis on DEXA. They freak out justifiably, go through all of this fear, anxiety, change their life, do all kinds of things. And then they get a REMS and their REMS is stone cold normal. And so then they're stuck in this really significant quagmire of like, well, what do I do? You know, do I have osteoporosis or not? And so we have to get as much information as possible. So that's a very challenging uh, situation to be in. And this misclassification also hurts in the traditional medical model because we see drugs recommended. So let's say, for example, someone's spine was, uh, you know, came in at whatever, negative three, but their hip is negative one or negative, let's make it even better. Let's say it's totally normal. It's negative 0.5. So that person is gonna potentially be diagnosed with osteoporosis, or they will be diagnosed with osteoporosis, and likely, in most places, put on a drug. Now, if the discordance is that big, the concern here is that if the discordance is wide, meaning one or two standard deviations, that one of those two numbers is not accurate. Because osteoporosis is, in general, not an isolated disease process, unless somebody is not loading part of their body for some reason, or has other thing, something other for that specific part of the body. Osteoporosis is a systemic disease. It's a bone metabolism problem, uh, usually. And so it'd be rare to have a spine that's that bad and hips that are that good. The spine is generally going to be a little bit worse. So that misclassification then is going to help drive pharmaceutical prescribing, and you're going to get treated potentially unnecessarily with drugs that have significant side effects. All right, so then let's go back to some of those terms I defined. Accuracy and precision. Which one's more accurate, DEXA or REMS? We don't really know. It seems to be that REMS is more precise. In other words, we get closer to the same measure each time we do a REMS. And we see this with people who've had repeat REMS in short windows because REMS doesn't have any radiation. So for particularly people that own these devices, you know, they'll scan team members over and over again, uh, try to learn how to do it, and you will get the same results every time. So REM seems to be very precise. That doesn't mean it's accurate. When we look at studies comparing REMS to DEXA, we do see that it is reasonably accurate compared to DEXA. But as I've said before, DEXA is considered the gold standard. So if something's the gold standard, we can't say if something else is more accurate or not. We just don't know. We can only say that it is X percentage within the range of DEXA. But we also know that DEXA is less precise. DEXA has significant room for error. So is it more accurate? It doesn't seem like it, but we really can't say for sure. A couple other interesting things about DEXA versus REMS, and I confirmed this with Dr. Birch as well. When I consider REMS, I wanna know what the T-score is. I'm interested in density. I'm also interested in bone quality, and the REMS also gives us that. So that's obviously gonna be superior than DEXA because if we're looking at bone strength, fracture risk, it is a combination of density and quality. We need to know both. DEXA is only gonna give us density. If we can learn quality too, there's additional value there. Also, the speed of improvement on REM seems to be faster than that of DEXA. Now, why would that be? Well, an ultrasound is gonna be able to look at more than just the mineralized content. It's gonna be able to look at the collagen matrix. It's gonna be able to look at the non-mineralized bone within the bone that it's looking at with the, the probe. So I think a REMS is gonna pick up on new bone faster than a DEXA because the DEXA requires it to be mineralized and calcified before the X-ray beam can bounce off of it in the DEXA. So I think REMS is gonna respond faster. We have people that do REMS every six months in our program, not my recommendation, which is what they do, but we do see consistent improvement in REMS at six month intervals. We don't see that on DEXA. In fact, I just had a patient who had, he did his yearly DEXA follow-up, but he didn't do a DEXA at the beginning of our program. So it fell six months into our program. His DEXA got worse. Obviously he's not happy, but here's the thing. When you're building bone, you have to break down bone before you can put it in there. And when you put it in there, it's not calcified yet. So DEXA frequently will get worse before it gets better. Now, is he actually headed in the right direction? We don't know yet. His bone turnover markers look pretty good. Everything looks pretty good. I think he's headed in the right direction. I, if he would have asked me, I would have had him delay that DEXA. But he's going to do a REMS again at the end of his program. And he actually did a REMS at the beginning of his program. So we're going to get six-month intervals just with different modalities. And that's okay, too. So you just have to be careful what you're getting with your imaging. You have to understand what the imaging is saying to the best of our ability and understand that at some point, we really don't have a 100% accurate and precise tool 
to measure bone quality, bone density, and fracture risk. So we just take all of the information that we can, bone turnover markers, REMS, DEXA, put it all together and then come up with a plan. So if you need help coming up with that plan and you're interested in working with us as one of our patients, please consider clicking on the link in the description below to talk to one of our team members about whether or not our program is a good fit for you. If you're listening to this on a podcast, you can go to optimalhumanhealth.com and go under the programs tab and you'll find both our HealthSpan Nation and our Platinum Experience program, which is our full service bone health program. And remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis is not the end, but deciding to reverse it is the beginning. I'll see you in the next video.